we're gonna react to Carlos Nassar obliterating world records in his home country, smashing PRs, junior world records, looking like he's 33, and we're gonna start right now. Okay, so one of the crazy parts that I love about freaking weightlifting is when you go to a home venue for a big time lifter, there tends to be an absolute ruckus. One of the things that I love is that when you're watching these, these videos, right, from the Euro Championships, is like you see Carlos Nassar go out and just absolutely slay, especially his last snatch. Now, he only took two clean and jerks, but we're gonna break down what he does, how he works through this. I do like to see that Bulgarian weightlifting is coming back up now. I'm not gonna hold my breath here. Well, maybe I will hold my breath. I'm gonna be the guy that says I'm slightly suspicious, but let's go into this because I think it's still fun, right? Okay, so we're gonna check this out. Look at that freaking, how many people are in the audience there. Big time lifts. And keep in mind too, this dude literally just like, I think he partially tore his Achilles or tore his Achilles, something happened, like a sink fell on him. And this was like six to nine months ago. Something crazy, if I remember correctly, which is very, very impressive. We've actually had a world-class top 10 shot putter in the world the year that she tore her Achilles. It took over a year to recover. So we've got on here, what is this? 168 for a junior. I also think about too, uh, in this case, an American comparison would probably be someone like Harrison Morris when he was on the, the come up. I've always thought very solid technique here. Boom. I think we have that angle from the side here that we can watch on the replay. So 168 opener, all on it, right? So we can see, eh, of course we can't see the, the knee movement, but he is pretty good at getting the knees to come back and to stay much more, not like go out as much. And I think that's one thing that a lot of people do ignore is I think he's got some solid technique. Now, Nassar comes back up. He's gonna take 73, 173. I think like to comprehend how heavy 173 is, I would just challenge anyone to go snatch grip deadlift like 150, let alone snatch 173. Okay, so we're looking at like just shy of 100 or 380 pounds. So we're gonna get this set. Holds good position, right? Okay, so what are we looking at right here? Right there, you can see knees clear back. Now he does have a little bit of arm bend there keeps his chest coming up, okay? Keeps that chest coming up. And if we notice there too, you can see he's still flat footed. Okay, so that bar gets into his hips right there. That's when his heel starts to rise, when the bar is right here into the hips. You can see that main contact on the singlet. He gets good hip extension and then just punches that overhead, catches that nice good snatch there, 173. Crowd's going wild, absolutely fantastic. They love it. Hometown hero. Now what's wild here is that he goes up five kilos to 73, now only three kilos to 76. But again, that's a huge freaking snatch, 176. Now he is just shy of a 200 pounder. So when he's out, actually outside of comp, he probably, I would say it probably walks around between 93 and 95 kilos. Uh, let's see how he gets set here. 176 and whoever's editing this if we could actually play this in real time okay so let's see here boom and you can notice it is a bit slower but he holds those positions and i think that that's one thing too that oftentimes in weightlifting younger athletes and and jake horse who snatched 145 as a 73 for us one thing jake would always say is like what you do from the floor to the knee really you just have to control the position. You don't need to go fast. And Nork Vardanian used to say, think about it as a zipper. It's like, zip, right? So if you can hold that position to the knee, push the knees back, keep the chest coming up, stay flat footed, like key cues here, very key cues. Then once you get past the knee, then the bar's in position, then you can turn it on. And that's where you might see athletes snatch a lot from a high hang or from a two box, but then they're out of position if they from the floor. So that's the main point here is that we've got to be in position coming from the floor. So let's rewatch this and we'll go back in slow-mo. Good. Okay, so get set. Boom. You know, chest 
maybe could come up a little bit more. It's 176 though, but see how his knees go directly back. He stays over that flat foot there, still holding that flat foot. So now as the bar gets over the knees, notice so a lot of people say, oh, you, you really want to push your knees under? Yes, you want to bend the knees forward under by extending at the hips and rising with your chest. And if you notice, he's still flat footed here, right? If you take a peek, he is still flat footed. So if we can hold that flat footed position until your chest is upright, then we're in a good finish position. And then you just got to punch and lock that out overhead. Absolutely huge snatch, dude. Huge junior world record. 176. I'm gonna be the guy that says it. I, I think this dude looks like he's like 27. Dude, the North Koreans are popping off right now. Clean and jerking 125 is 49s. Why isn't anybody bringing this stuff up? Come on. Like, come on. When are we going to learn as a sport? When's weightlifting going to learn? Now, that doesn't mean I've gotta back off a little bit, but we've gotta just be aware of some of this stuff. That doesn't mean that Nassar's technique is bad though. I actually, I do, like I mentioned, I do enjoy his technical movement. And I don't think it's absolutely amazing, but it's solid, very solid, especially for a younger kid. Okay, so let's see here. That's where I'd say now on his cleans, he holds a little bit of a weird position with this arm bend right there. Uh, and clearly his cleans are not as strong. So if, if he would be, well, no, this is what, that's 208, that's still freaking good, dude. That's big, comes under, look at the knees coming under, it's like, Boom, now I would try to get him to hold longer arms with the, the elbows, but that's still solid. He almost gets into this like little hip clean position. And the other thing I wanna point out is this is one thing that there's often a debate about is like foot movement. Notice here with his feet, when he's moving, okay, so if we go back, right there, right? Like you, they're not jumping all over the place. When he's pulling, Okay, and, and you could see Lu Jun was like this. Boom, just a little slide out, just a little slide out. Get out there, finish long, get out there, catch that you know, in an upright position. You can see he's in that upright position, gets out of the bottom. Sits here, stays nice and tight. Look at that nice and tight dip. And this is another thing I wanted to point out. His elbows do not drop on the dip, right? He gets to the bottom of that dip and it just stays right there, big drive. Now what's interesting is I feel like his right foot might be hitting a little bit earlier than his left. Maybe it could be a little more narrow, but yeah, his right foot did hit before his left because then he recovers with his, his back foot first. Still, 208, excellent. That's heavy, that is heavy. That is freaking heavy. Okay, now we're gonna get into his last clean and jerk up. I saw an Azerbaijan. Oh, here we go. Now we got a good good angle here on the side. So you can see here, boom, this position with the knees. This is what we talk about. Now I would prefer if his elbows stayed a little bit longer and his chest would probably come up a little bit more there. Knees come through. Now right here, I'd wanna see true extension. He tends to hip extend like crazy. Well, he does extend those knees pretty well there. And then bring that chest. Notice how tight the bar is to his chest. Okay, so that's another cue that I think we could benefit from is like chest to bar after the hip, chest to bar after the hip. And then you can see here that upright dip. Now I think he could have driven it maybe a little bit longer to move that front foot out. Jerk's not terrible though, really not terrible. Now he's taking 215. Just put 215 on the rack and try and walk it out. It is so freaking heavy. So kudos to him for smacking these huge lifts on the platform in front of his home crowd, trying to get everybody riled up, trying to get more people back into the sport of weightlifting in Bulgaria. Dude, this is intense, right? Let's see here. I wanna watch these feet. Watch the feet, watch the feet. Let's see it. Dialing it in. Big pull, woo, good. Comes up nice and clean, on the clean. Watch his elbows. So my assumption is he wanted to hit this total and then now he's probably gonna back off on his training quite a bit until he leads into the Olympics. So this is 100% gonna solidify him. He's likely gonna have to go weigh in uh, in Thailand now. I would be very surprised if he would compete in Thailand. 
I do sort of like his knee movement, to be completely honest. I don't like his back position or his elbow position. I do like his foot positioning. And I think like that's stuff that we can just learn from it. Uh, I like how well he meets the bar. Like that's something that's very hard to teach and, and, and to teach that meeting the bar and, and even this position here, like shrugging the bar back into the chest, that's something that's very tough to teach. And if you guys need help with your actual weightlifting training, you need a periodized program, head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store or the Apple iOS Store, download Peak Strength and then select on Olympic weightlifting. You can actually get a full periodized program. And we specify each day of the week with a technical goal or a strength-based goal based off of your PRs, okay? So if your snatch is a little bit weaker, we understand how to develop that program to get that snatch to come up while still maintaining strength in the back squat. So again, peak strength that app and then Olympic weightlifting. Now let's finish watching this. So I wanted to break down this a little bit more. I think that when we're thinking about the dip, if we can be as rigid as possible in this dip, that's gonna enable us to hold better positioning in the overhead position. And we get a longer drive. I feel like he's a little bit better, but he's a little more narrow, I feel like, because you can start to see that right knee gets out over. And you can see here that foot, the way the foot starts to come up and the hips are here. And this is where oftentimes people do forget too. Like everything basically comes from the foot, but a lot of what's going to the foot as far as force production is starting in the hip. That's with sprinting. That's with movement in throwing. That's with movement and weightlifting is that a lot of this, you can even see how he recovers there. Uh, he recovers this way, right? So watch here, comes this way, boom, and he recovers. So we've just gotta be aware if we've got a weightlifter, Nassar is on a whole nother planet, dude. He's an absolute savage, an absolute freak. I also love his celebrations, great celebrations. I think the big factor is, is like looking at, ooh, He's wincing a little bit there. It looks like something might be bothering him, maybe his lower back, but being aware of what's happening with the hips or in the split position from the hips or even on a snatch, you can start to see what would lead to different foot pressures. So just saying like pressure from the specific foot aspect, what is this official doing? Okay, so we see here, just being aware of that stuff's key. So his heels start to pop, looks like right about here. Now I think his chest does get back behind the bar a bit too much, but he does a great job meeting the bar. Boom, right there. This is great angle because now you can see why he tends to jump forward. If we can look at right here, okay, he gets up there on the heel, okay? So he tends to go a little bit this way with the bar because his chest gets so far back. And I'm even trying to think like, what did Carlos snatch and clean and jerk it when we were in Greece? So like this position here, he gets his center mass gets, especially with that head back, it gets quite a ways back. Now watch where his foot position goes, right here. What's interesting is that he pulls himself, you know, there's some type of mechanism. And if you see his feet here, they sort of jump forward, just a bit jump forward, probably like five inches, but that almost helps him then get the chest to the bar a bit more. Uh, so ways that you could try and fix that if that, if that's a, issue that you see with yourself, try no feet cleans. That's gonna help iron that out. You know, Carlos is on another level. His coaches are doing a great job. Obviously he knows what he's doing and they'll probably clean it up if they deem it as an issue heading into the Olympics. And this is where I still think that right does come down a little bit earlier compared to that left. Maybe that chest could come through a little bit quicker. He does sneak through there. Dude's shoulders are freaking strong, man. Look at that. Sneak through, save it. Boom, save it, save it, save it, save it. Nice. So congrats to Carlos Nassar. Absolutely fantastic performance in his home country of Bulgaria. If you guys need help with your training, head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, or the Apple iOS Store. Because remember, freaks, if you want to become a champion, you've always got to cultivate your power. Peace.